Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve count sub islands, a problem from today's leak code contest. We're given two different grids M by N. So basically each of these grids is guaranteed to be the exact same size. That's good for us. They're all containing either zeros or ones. Zeros represent water, ones represent land. And we want to count the number of sub islands in the second grid. So this is grid two. We want to count how many sub islands it has. Now, what exactly is a sub island? Well, first of all, an island is basically a set of contiguous ones, basically horizontally or vertically, right? You can't go diagonal, but you can go up and down, left and right. So this is one island and this is a second island down here. So what makes this red one a sub island? Basically, if you look at an island in the grid one, you can see that this sub island has a corresponding island in grid one where basically every single cell, in this case, there's six different cells are included in this island island and not only that there happens to be an extra one but extra ones are perfectly fine we just want to make sure that every single cell in the island here is also contained in a single island in grid one you can see it's made up of a single island in grid one all right, so that makes this island a sub island. Now let's go through the other islands. Here we have a single island. It's not connected anywhere else vertically or horizontally. Does it have a corresponding island in grid uh, one? It does not. So this does not count as a sub island. Let's go to the next island over here. This is a single island by itself. Does it have a corresponding island in grid one? Yes, there's a corresponding big island like this one, which includes every cell from this one, but this only has a single cell, right? So that's basically made up of a island in grid one. That's good. Now, we have another sub island over here, right? That's made up of that exact same island we just went over, but that's perfectly fine. It could be that two sub islands in grid two have a single, you know, larger island in grid one. That still means these two are separate sub islands. We still count them. And lastly, we have this island over here. Now it's yellow, meaning it's not a sub island. And if you look over here, uh, you know, it does have a single, uh, corresponding cell but the other two are water we needed both of these two over here to be yellow to be islands uh for it to actually be a sub island but that's not the case so this is not a sub island so in total we counted one two three sub islands so in our output we are going to return three now a really naive way to solve this problem would basically be okay get every single island in grid one map the island to a list of its coordinates so you know zero zero is one coordinate zero one is one coordinate you know, get that entire list of coordinates do the same for every single island in grid two and then just check for every island in grid two does there happen to be a island in grid one that contains every single cell now that's obviously not going to be super efficient and it's going to be kind of a pain to code right you're going to have to compare basically two hash maps together try to find how many sub islands are here that can be made up in grid one a more intuitive way and easier to code ways basically do a simultaneous DFS. So the goal is go through every position in grid two, find every single island, right? First position, we find an island. Then we're going to traverse this, right? Basically to traverse the entire island, get every single cell in the island. Of course, we're going to end up going through every position like this. Now, of course, if we went out of bounds or if we reached a water cell, we would not continue, right? But basically we're going to traverse every position here and at the same time we are going to be looking in island or in grid one and checking for every one of these positions that we visited that we found a one at meaning it's an island was there a corresponding one in grid one if there is then we're going to return true if we find even a single one like for example maybe this was water and, and you know we're, we're checking does this show up as a one over here if this was water then we would have to return false this is an island this is a contiguous island but you know there happened to be a cell that did not correspond in grid one so therefore this is not a sub island but that obviously wasn't the case right if we do a simultaneous dfs we're going to end up traversing 
every position like this, right? Because these six correspond to these six over here. We're going to see there's a one in every single position over here. So then, of course, this is a sub island. So we can return true, meaning we found one sub island. We're going to add that to our total. So our result so far is going to be one. We found one sub island. And of course, we don't want to have to visit the same island twice. So we're going to, you know, as we cross these out, we're going to add them to our visit set. So we're not going to want to visit the same island twice, of course. Now we're going to traverse through every other position, right? We're going to say, okay, this is water, this is water, water, water. Okay, now we found another island, right? So we're going to traverse this island. It's only one position, right? So we, we cross it out, we visited it. But before we're finished, we want to check, did it have a corresponding island in grid, uh, in grid one? It did not, right? So yes, we visited this. Yes, we traversed the entire island, but it did not. it's not a sub-island, basically. So our result is going to stay one. And we're basically going to continue this algorithm, right? This is going to be water, water, water. We're going to do a DFS on this island. See that, yes, every position in this island had a corresponding one in the first grid. So, yes, we're going to add that to our result. We're going to visit this. And we'll do the same here, right? We'll do a DFS here. But we'll see that, yes, there was at least one position that was water so that one of these cells could not be found. And so this is not going to be it. So that's kind of the main idea if you uh, are trying to you know figure out maybe a similar problem to this it's kind of like in a certain binary search question where for example you're comparing two trees excuse the drawing which is kind of overlapping with some of the text but you know if you're comparing two trees and you're checking do they have the same values you would basically do the same thing right you'd start at two pointers both at the root of the tree you'd compare the values are they equal yes then you'd recursively compare the left subtrees of each of these you'd recursively compare the right subtrees as well so that's kind of the intuition of this problem we're doing a simultaneous dfs on both of these grids we can do that in O of n by m time where these are the dimensions of the grid and that's also going to be the space complexity because we're going to have a visit set with the same dimensions to make sure we don't visit the same positions multiple times with that being said let's finally jump into the code now so this problem is going to be about 20 lines of code so the first thing i like to do with graphs is get the dimension so get let's get the number of columns and rows in these grids remember both grids are the exact same size that's going to be really good for us we're also going to have a visit set to make sure we don't visit the same position twice in grid two. And we are going to use a DFS function. So we're going to pass in the coordinates that we're currently doing DFS on. And I'm going to fill out this function in just a bit. So what we're going to do is basically go through every row in our grid and every single column basically go through every coordinate in our grid and we're going to run dfs but of course we don't want to run dfs on the same grid or on the same position twice and we only want to run dfs on grid two if we found an island portion so basically if this position is equal to one or in other words we can just leave it as it is so if this evaluates to true and this position hasn't been visited so if r c uh, not in visit and if then we're actually going to call DFS, so we're doing this in the conditional statement, we're going to call DFS on this coordinate. And if it evaluates to true, we're going to take our result, which is going to be count, increment it by one. So let me actually define that result up above. So count is initially going to be zero. Count basically is the number of sub islands in grid two. If this evaluates to true, meaning you know this island that we just found, an unvisited island that we just ran DFS on, if it happened to have a corresponding island in grid one, then it happens to be a sub island, then we can increment uh, count by one. And at the end, we're just gonna return whatever count happens to be. So now we're gonna do the actual uh, meat and potatoes of this function, which is gonna be the DFS. So our base case is always going to be if we go out of bounds. So first, let's check if row is less than zero or column is less than zero or row is too big, meaning it's exactly equal to rows or column is too big, meaning it's exactly equal to columns. Or we're going to continue if this position is water. Basically, if grid two of row column is water or is equal to zero, then we're also going to return or if this position has already been visited, we're also gonna return, right? So then we're gonna return. Now, what value are we gonna return? Are we gonna return false or are we gonna return true? Well, just because we found water in grid two doesn't mean that this 
this island is not a sub island, right? Of course, we're ha we're going to have to find some kind of base case. We're going to have to reach the edge of this island at some point. So we are going to return true in this case. This itself does not mean that uh, the current island we're visiting in grid two is not a sub island. That's going to be the next condition I'm going to show you. So basically, you know, we if this did not if the, if, the, if we did not return up above, that means grid two is land, meaning grid two is a one. But if grid one, if the value in grid one is equal to zero, that means grid grid two is land, but grid one is water. Remember, that's the case where we know this is definitely not a sub island. So that's when we're going to return false, but we don't want to return false immediately. So I'm going to have a result variable in this function. Result is initially going to be true, but if this condition evaluates, then we're going to set result equal to false. We don't want to return immediately because we still want to visit the entirety of this island that we're at in grid two. So we're going to do that. We are going to run DFS in all four directions before we actually end up returning this result variable. So we are going to return result, but before we do that, let's run our DFS in all four directions. Oh, and don't forget, uh, we do have to update our visit. So if we uh, did not return up above, that means this, this row column has not been visited. So we can go ahead and add it to our visit set. And of course, I'm going to copy and paste this DFS four times because we're going to do this in all four directions. So row minus one, row plus one, column minus one, and column plus one. And we do want to know what the result of these was. So maybe it turns out that this portion of the grid happens to be a one. So this if statement does not execute, but maybe in one of these four directions, we do find a cell in grid two that is a one, but in grid one, it's a zero, meaning that grid two is not a sub island. So we are this result variable we have, uh, we do want to potentially update it. So we're going to set result equal to the, res the return value of this DFS and it with result. So basically, if any of these four DFS functions returns false, then we are ultimately going to return false. Because remember, it, all it takes is one missing uh, cell in grid one for us to have to return false because we need to find every single one for this island. If we find even a single one is missing for this island in grid one, then we have to return false because then it's no longer a sub island. So you can see it's about 20 lines, give or take, if you remove some of these spaces, or you could probably figure out some ways to shorten it up, but you can see it does get accepted in this contest. I think this is about as efficient as you can get for this solution. Maybe after the contest, somebody's gonna have some super insane solution that I didn't think of, but I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot, and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.